Polk County Fair Board would like to thank the Central High School FFA for building metal doors for our beef farm. We did not have the resources to build them ourselves, and they did a great job on them. They worked closely with the fair staff to make sure that all measurements were correct, and not only built them for us, but also delivered them. The fair could not survive without the generous community partners like Central FFA. So thank you. There's a letter from the... Uh, Thank you. Hi, I'm Zach Meyer. Um, so, originally I was planning on having um, next year's, who was going to replace me, um, Andrew Love, to be here, but he was not able to make it, so I just wanted to let you guys know next year um, the plan will be Andrew Love will be speaking at these. Um, the reason that I did it this year is because our student body vice president, um, Alana Schmidt, was not able to work that in her schedule because she worked a lot, so I just took that over, but traditionally it's the vice president, so yeah, it'll be Angela next year. All right, so we got a lot going on. Um, so in the recent days, we've had the freshman class council um, was interviewed. They were the last of the leadership positions for next year to be chosen because we go down there and like talk to them. So we actually had 11 um, students uh, we're interested in the five positions, so we actually let six have it because there were six amazing kids. Um, I don't have the exact names um, of all the kids, but I know that the president is Natalie Wells. Um, so that's exciting to see. Um, and then another thing with the freshmen is we had the freshman orientation was last Monday, um, and that was amazing to see all those kids um, went into the um, cafeteria at this high school, and we had uh, the teachers uh, and the staff introduce himself, and our new uh, principal for next year, spoke, Jan Jo. Um, and then we had um, different clubs and um, sports teams and lots of different like activities to choose from were there to represent like what Central High School is all about, and so they were introduced to that and kind of given like an insight of like what they could do and be involved in, because one thing that we always tell them is, get involved. So that's the big thing. We gave them an idea of what they could do. Um, other things that have been going on, um, there were athletic awards and the Thespian Awards on this last Saturday, and we had the final choir concert and the final band concert. Um, we finished up, we had Rotary Awards um, for the freshmen, sophomores, and juniors to be recognized for their talent in the classroom um, because the seniors have their senior awards but it's good to recognize the other classes as well. Um, let's see. Other things we have, we had our final club day. Um, so the kids were, I know for my club we had a goodbye and a celebration for how, what we've accomplished throughout the year. So I'm sure that a lot of kids had fun and got an idea of what they wanted to do next year, if they wanted to do a different club or wanted to continue. Um, let's see, other things we had. Um, graduation is this Friday, <laughs> so that's exciting. Um, I will not be able to give a report on what happened in June because we won't be having a school board meeting in July, so <laughs> that'll be the, the next coming thing. Um, and that's about it. Oh yeah, and um, so next year we will not have um, Mr. Witt as our, um, the ASVEC teacher. He will be uh, replaced by Mr. Roberts. So. That's going to be a good transition. I think will help our school be better because Mr. Wood just has so much on his plate. So it's good to spread sort of around the activities. So yeah, All right. Thank you. So there's a couple of things. Uh, graduation is rain or shine. I mean, they had that when they said it. Oh right? uh, yeah. <laughs> and senior awards is. Oh yeah, on Wednesday and then baccalaureate on Thursday, both at 7 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> Hey Zach, thank you for being here each month and giving yeah. the updates. It's been it's been fun. It's yeah, been a great job. <laughs> thank you. you. Always brighten my mood and, and all of our moods. So, congratulations on a wonderful, wonderful career in the you. school district. We look forward to seeing what you do in the future. Yeah, me too. Exactly. <laughs> Where are you going to school? I'm going to Colorado School of Mines in mm -hmm. Golden, mm -hmm. Colorado. Mm -hmm. That's Thank you. Uh, Good evening, everybody. So, like 
Zachary. I will be graduating this year, so I do have these three wonderful young ladies that will be sharing the plate next year for presenting. So if they want to go ahead and introduce them, please. Uh, I'm Naomi Lader, I'm a junior. I'm Wanda Garcia, I'm a junior. I'm Rosalinda Sensi, I'm a junior. Um, so basically what we did in the month of May, uh, we had a trauma-informed training with we had a trauma-informed training with Ms. Vanderlyn. Um, our class took the ACES survey and we did a film study of paper tigers. And our class is really looking forward to learning more about how to be trauma-informed and how we can help our school. Uh, we also had a respect video lesson uh, in which there was an original rap by Bert and Jeffrey Barlow focused on being respectful of our local stores off-campus lunch. Um, Central High School staff and substitutes and ourselves. Um, the logo was Respect All Bubbles, and then we recognized the work, the work ethic of students. And then we also had an awesome uh, field trip to the ropes course, which um, it involved like team building and trust uh, activities. Um, we had such a great time. We overcame fears, helped each other through challenges and obstacles, <coughs> and Ms. Vanderlyn uh, joined us too. And what kind of memories do you guys have from that? Well, I am deeply afraid of heights, so the ropes course was like really terrifying for me, but my uh, peers helped me through it. They uh, supported me, they encouraged me to keep on going. Uh, sorry, I wasn't able to attend that. Um, just like Rosa said, that, um, that I got to, like, I was really, really scared of heights, and so our, our teammates got us, like, help us and then we got to like, uh, be, be closer as friends and as a leadership group. Yeah, and also I think it was a good way to end the year, <coughs> like with all of our seniors graduating and everything, just to come together and actually build that relationship so we can continue on through the years. Um, something else that we have actually started, um, our pantry project, as I mentioned last time, uh, that will be starting up next year. We have the shelves for it already and we're hoping to get donations from the community uh, for that. Um, thank you for allowing time to hear about some of our um, closing of the year activities. I just want to check in on how much time I have, if it's three minutes. Okay, because I read it really quickly and I think maybe seven. Um, so I had asked teachers to share things that are positive happening in their classroom that they'd want to share with the board as we're closing out the year. So I'm going to start by sharing some of the year and celebrations, and please let me know if you can't hear me. Um, Move it a little closer for the whole base of it, if you get closer to the And so tomorrow is our last day for Beyond the Bell and Power Hour, and we have a fun field day planned. There's a kindergarten celebration scheduled for this Wednesday. There's um, Central High School graduates coming to visit Team Time Thursday morning at 8.15. Our fifth grade celebration is Thursday at 2 o'clock, and we have two sessions scheduled for a fun run on Friday at 12.50 to 1.30, and then again at 1.45 to 2.20. Um, and then I asked teachers to share, so I'm gonna start with some first grade celebrations. First grade students have worked hard all year mastering number bonds, friends of 10, adding two digit numbers together, and solving world, word problems, sorry. They are showing great skills in writing complete sentences that start with a capital letter and end with a period. They have strengthened their reading skills through targeted intervention groups, as well as through science and social studies lessons utilizing Be Glad strategies. Students have learned to use resources they have helped create, posters, charts, and chants, to recall information when answering questions verbally and in writing. Our students are excited for their first grade field day tomorrow. They will participate in various games and relays with students from other first grade and K-1 classes, followed by a picnic lunch together. As the year comes to a close, the third grade team at Independence Elementary School has been using our PLC time to plan some great, important, and exciting activities to end the school year. They are taking advantage of the resources in the community to promote literacy over the summer. One of the activities we'll be doing is taking our classes to the Independence Library to learn about the summer reading program. We'll be getting library applications to send home and student, with students so when they go to the library, they can check out books. Third grade's last Be Glad unit is all about people who live in the Willamette Valley, both past and present. They'll be taking their classes to River, Riverview Park to look at the plaques about the Kalapuya Native Americans and immigrants who came to this area as they explore the Willamette River Trail. 
This will help our students see the real world connection as we connect our learning to our community. Our team is also planning some get to know you activities with our three combined classrooms to help our students get to know each other better since they'll be mixing up classroom placements for fourth grade next year. <coughs> we want to take this opportunity to help students find things in common with one another and start developing some friendships for over the summer and next school year. Some of our combined activities will also be around the Great American Eclipse that is happening this summer on August 21st and will be very visible in our local area. We are excited about what we have planned and the connection to our learning. Spring has been an exciting time in fourth grade at IES. We wrapped up our Oregon Historical Events Unit, which included field trips to Fort E.M. Hill in Grand Ronde and Philip Foster Farm near Estacada. Students learned about important events and individuals in Oregon's history, from the early explorers to the Oregon Trail, comparing the perspectives of Native Americans and pioneers. Students experienced the Oregon Trail through simulations in the classroom and on our Oregon Trail walk through the town of Independence. Students assumed pioneer identities and made decisions in their wagon trains as they loaded wagons, moved along the trail, fort by fort, suffered fates along the way, and finally reached Oregon City. Ms. Greiner once again took on the annual challenge of teaching 75 fourth graders the Virginia Reel, which they performed <coughs> together for the whole school. It was super fun. Students also worked together in the classroom to assemble wagons in preparation for the Oregon Trail walk. We are grateful for the many volunteers who gave their time and energy to make these events possible. Sheriff Mark, Sheriff Mark Garten visited IES on May 31st to share a presentation about internet safety for our fourth and fifth graders. His message encouraged kids to make smart decisions and be safe when using the internet, including social media <coughs> and online gaming. Kids learned about not so obvious risks related to common teen and tween activities, including sharing photos and gaming chats. He talked about how cyberbullying often begins so that kids can know how to prevent it and how to respond appropriately when it happens. He emphasized how important it is that students know what to do and who to tell if they realize that they've made an unsafe decision or encounter risky situations. Additionally, Sheriff Garten encouraged students to talk to their parents and families about internet safety and to develop healthy boundaries for online activities. On Friday, June 2nd, IES fourth graders attended a Math Buddies Fun Fair at Western Oregon University. They enjoyed a partnership this spring with Matthew Cienceta from WU and his Math 396 students. WU students have been corresponding with our fourth graders, getting to know each other, and sharing helpful feedback about math problem-solving strategies. Fourth graders got to meet their WU buddy at the fun fair on Friday and had a blast playing math games created by the WU students. Some of the comments fourth graders shared regarding things they enjoyed about math buddies and ways their buddy helped them with their problem-solving follow. I learned new ways to explain my work, said Zach. It was fun because we got to ask each other questions, said Lily. My buddy was Brooke. She has a cat. She wishes she had a dog. She likes ice cream with extra toppings, like me. She likes to play with her family, like me. That was Abby. I like that we wrote letters to them and they sent letters back, said Reyes. And Math Buddies has helped me remember to show how I did what I did, said Sean. <coughs> it has been so rewarding watching these students grow over the last several months, becoming more independent as learners, improving academic and life skills, and preparing for future successes. As the year comes to a close, we want to say how proud we are of their hard work. We also want to express our gratitude for the tremendous support and involvement of our fellow IES colleagues, the Central School District, and our amazing community. And then I'll conclude with our fifth grade team. As we come to the end of the year and administer our last rounds of DRAs, we have seen an increasing number of students advance one or more reading levels. As excited as we are as teachers, it doesn't compare to the level of excitement our students demonstrate as they progress. Our students participated in a Talmud visitation where the web leaders took small groups of students on a tour and answered questions. All of our students were energized and excited about their transition to Talmud. As teachers, we felt the morning was well planned and organized. We were very impressed with the high level of pride the web leaders demonstrated throughout the morning. Last month, the fifth grade team was able to go on a field trip to OMSI. Many of our students have never been to OMSI and a few even stated that they didn't think they would ever get to go back. We would like to thank our parent club for making this field trip happen. Our students were very engaged, had perfect behavior, and were very appreciative. As we finish up our first year teaching our units using GLAD strategies, we have found many benefits that have come as a result of implementing GLAD. Student engagement is increased, collaboration among team members is much more positive and productive, and students have retained what they have learned and made connections across units. One teacher shared that she has been watching her fifth grade students excel at research and 
presenting on an extra assignment about the solar system. Students were asked to pick the planet they were interested in and create either a Google slide pre presentation and model or a poster and model with at least 10 chunks of information. They are helping each other in unlikely student combinations, creating incredible artwork and models, and learning how to navigate the front of the classroom as a presenter. One student who often struggles, especially in writing, is teaching others how to insert questions, video links, do transitions, and text wrapping. We have a very proud fifth grade team. Again, thank you for allowing us to share our successes at IES. Thank you very much. So moving along with moving into the administrative reports, Doug Dude from Polk County. Doug? Yeah. How y'all doing? Good. Thanks for letting me come out again. I'm going to just pass around some info for you here, just so you have it. You don't mind, yeah. So thank you again for um, allowing me to come out this evening. I'll try to go as quickly as possible here and uh, respect your time. It's my second time coming out this school year. We came out earlier and did a report on the school based mental health program with Polk County. <coughs> um, this time I'm coming out just to talk to you a little bit about our suicide prevention efforts and to join uh, all of you in thanking Buzz for the partnership uh, that we've had the last several years. Buzz has been, um, He's just been a fantastic partner to us at the county. Um, and it, you'll see with suicide prevention, I'll talk about that. But I know that when we start to talk about things like suicide, um, that sometimes that makes people nervous. Uh, sometimes it worries people about um, what we're gonna say and what we're gonna do. And Buzz has um, allowed us uh, in the school to do some projects around that. And I know in that he incurs some risk. Uh, he incurs, you know, the possibility that people will be uh, critical of him or complain to him. And um, so, Buzz, we just really appreciate uh, you uh, being willing to trust us and let us come in. Um, I handed out a, a report for you, and I'm not going to talk much about that, but I just want to let you know here in our department at Polk County, we lead the uh, Mid-Valley Suicide Prevention Coalition, which is a multi-agency, multi-discipline Coalition. We have law enforcement, school folks, uh, multiple social service agencies, um, DHS, child welfare, lots of folks that are on that team. Uh, we meet quarterly, and a big part of what we're doing is providing evidence-based training around suicide prevention. Uh, we've actually paid to have four of your school district staff be trained as facilitators in one of those programs so that they can provide ongoing training anytime you want with your school staff. Um, so again, that's one of those partnerships. And I do know that you all have let us use this space uh, to do multiple suicide prevention trainings at no cost, uh, which we really, really appreciate. Um, again, I won't go into a lot of detail about all that work because I don't want to uh, bore you with that, but I did want to <coughs> highlight one project that we've been working on. Um, in, a, in addition to the training that we've tried to provide, we've provided that training to students and to staff and community members. We've also been working on some video projects and some messaging around mental health awareness and positive messaging around the prevention of suicide. And um, in that, again, we partnered with Central School District and specifically with uh, Mrs. Rosanna Larson and the Power Peers class. And I, I need to say to you what a fantastic partner she has been to us. Um, and you're about to see the fruits of that partnership here in a minute. I'm going to show you a quick three and a half minute video that we made with students from that Power Peers class um, that we think we feel like turned out really, really well. We'll let you be the judge of that here in just a minute. But Mrs. Larson um, just has given her classroom to us, has given us time, um, has allowed her students to be creative and participate in a process that is gonna have real life consequences, I think. Um, and so just very grateful for her. I also wanna give a shout out to just a couple other people here, some of your district staff. Norma, and I hope Norma, I say this right. If there's, I think it's Orozco, did I say it right? That's pretty good, I think. 
Uh, I want to thank Norma. She was she's up there at the front desk at Central High School, and I probably asked Norma when I go in there when we were filming these videos, probably no less than ten questions per thirty minutes. I think. <laughs> And uh, she was always extremely patient and got us things that we needed, uh, supplies, things that we forgot, and she would go track that down for us. We uh, just really appreciate her. And one last shout out to Jeff Witt, who also helped recruit students for this video. So the video I'm about to show you, three and a half minutes, I want you to know that we went into Power Peers class. The students of the Power Peers class helped us develop this idea. Their fingerprints are all over it. They starred in the film. There are no paid actors in there. Joy from the high school makes a, a cameo appearance in there. Um, but we just want to share this with you and let you see some of the great work that your <coughs> students are doing, uh, the fantastic work that Rosanna Larson is doing in the Power Peers, and, and I hope to show Buzz that your trust in us was worth it. So if you don't mind, I'm going to step behind you and try to get that going. There's a little pixelation there. I, it doesn't do that, but I, I did just want to let you know our plan is to come back in the fall and uh, we'll work with Mrs. Larson to release that video at the high school with a plan. We're going to create posters um, that will have video stills from that film that will direct students to different places to get help. The, the school-based health center 
um, the counseling office, our school-based mental health staff that are there in the building, and we'll be working to try to help students identify when they're when they're feeling like it was um, shown in that film that there are there is help uh, here in the district and there's help around the community that they can access. So, any questions? I can I can bring you a huge stack of those if you want. Yeah, I can. Two are they in Spanish as well? They, I don't know if they are, but if they're not, I we will get them in Spanish and before the end of the summer. One we'll of them ready to go in the fall. That's a great question. Anything else? Awesome. Thank you. If you don't mind, I'm just going to log out and then I'll. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Lisa Whitehall from the uh, Get Fit program. So good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Thank you for giving me your time to talk about our Get Fit program. Again, I'm going to do a little recap of the end of the year activities from mid-year when I came in to uh, let you know what we were doing and how things are going. So um, we're going to do a little slideshow and I'll be talking during it. At the end, I'm also going to um, be reading a statement <coughs> from one of our members that couldn't be here tonight, um, but she sent me an email about her story and I wanted to share that with you. So. I'd like to thank Adriana for helping me make this PowerPoint because I just provided her this stuff and she took it away. So um, the slides you're seeing are some of the activities that we did this year. Uh, participation in the Get Fit program uh, since last year has definitely increased. We're at about 62% of the central staff participating in one or more Get Fit activities. Um, we have many people who don't engage in uh, the Get Fit activities for a variety of reasons, but are actively engaged in their health. Um, there's many reasons why they don't do that. They may belong to a gym, um, but 85.4% of those say that the Get Fit program still um, reminds them to be healthy and encourages them and inspires them to um, continue on that healthy path. Uh, so on this slide, we had people um, talk about how the effects that they had, and um, they showed weight loss, lowered their blood pressure, healthier eating, learned ways to combat stress, as well as others. And these are our Wellness Wednesday um, activities that people dressed for. Um, Wellness Wednesdays give us a common goal which builds community around healthy living. It builds friendships and encourages active people to bring balance into their lives. And the central staff, they're great role models for their students and parents and their community around them. From this slide, you can see that um, people feel that this is a really positive thing in their lives um, and want to keep that around. So this is one of the quotes from our survey that someone shared with us. And on May 20th, we had an awesome day at Beaver Baseball, um, where Central Get Fit was awarded the All-Star Employee Wellness Program um, from Samaritan Health. This is a huge honor, and I would like to thank Dory Vickery for nominating us, and heartfelt thank to Buzz and the board for their continued support of this program. <coughs> so, um, Lori Leon is one of our um, instructional assistants at Ash Creek, and um, I would asked her a while ago if she would share her story, and she agreed nervously, um, but then something came up and she wasn't able to be here, so this is her story. The journey started in September of 2015. 
my doctor told me I was borderline diabetic and high cholesterol. I didn't want to go down the road of pills and shots. This disease is scary. I decided to take my health back and do it by diet. I quit eating candy and chips, which she says is her trigger food. I was losing weight like crazy. I dropped a su substantial amount of weight in just a couple of months, but I started to plateau. I was not exercising or walking at all, and in November I decided to join Get Fit's Walker Tracker Group. This group encourages me to walk and keep walking. My walking partner, Bonnie Lashley, and I started out at two miles on Monday through Thursday. We are going now between two and a half and three miles in under an hour. When we weren't able to do the walk outside because of weather, we would walk the halls of Ash Creek Elementary School. Each day I was getting stronger and my first example of how strong I was becoming was during spring break of this year. My family and I went to Seattle and we were walking up six blocks um, to the Space Needle. I did this hike without stopping, <coughs> mind you, two years ago. Whoops. Um, I did the... That makes sense. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, mind you, two years ago, I did the same walk and had to stop three times to get up those hills. I did this walk without stopping in under 20 minutes. Another instance was just this last Thursday and Friday. I accompanied my fifth grade student on a field trip to Bend. On our first hike, my student turns around and I was right behind him, <laughs> going up and down those stairs at Niagara Falls, sometimes running. Woo <laughs> My student turned around and says to me, Miss Lori, it is okay if you go back. I walked about 25,000 to 30,000 steps per day on our two-day trip, and we were walking up and down those hills at the lava beds. I was right up there with the front of the pack. If I went on this field trip a year ago, I would never have been able to keep up. I owe a big part of my success to get fit because it has given me the opportunity to keep moving and the strength to keep this journey going forward. I hope you will keep this program in our schools. The program is fun to compete, complete, to compete with other schools and keep me active and on my healthy lifestyle journey. I started out at 315 pounds and now I am 231 pounds. I no longer am considered a pre-diabetic and I am stronger than I've ever been before. Please consider that if I am doing this well and end up at the number five or six in the overall competition, then this program is helping a lot of other people also. Thank you for giving me the lifestyle to be, excuse me, to be in shape and healthier. Lori Leon. So thank you. Do you have any questions for me? So yes, I'm very proud of our group and um, the committee that we have. Um, tonight, <coughs> Joanne Divin is here. The rest of them couldn't be here, but they've done a lot of work out in the schools, on the ground, encouraging people to um, be active, eat healthier, all those wonderful things. So, so Steve, if you <coughs> go ahead and, uh, on behalf of the school district and the board, accept that so we can get into the uh, trouble. <coughs> I will accept it, but I'll tell you what. You deserve a ton of credit. Oh, thank and you. The team and everybody that participates. So, thank you so much. Thank you, <coughs> and thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> okay, Karen Harlow, beyond the bell. That's a tough act to follow, Teresa. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, I also have a Thank you for having me. I'm Karen Harlow, after school program director for the district. So we are in year four of a five year grant, <coughs> just finishing up. And I'm going to keep it pretty brief. I'm not going to 
go through all the highlights. So that's why you have them. But I do want to um, mention a few things for this year that I really believe are going to be key to sustainability for our programs, which is um, what we've really been working hard on this year to move forward. So <laughs> one of the, with the PLP at the high school, the personal learning plan for students now, instead of the senior <coughs> project, they have a certain number of community service hours that they need to um, give. And so we got a Reading Buddies program going, thanks mm -hmm. to Teresa Henderson, the site coordinator at the high school, and her work with Prindy and uh, Joyce Wall, actually and coordinating that and Teresa vets the students that want to volunteer and um, literally puts them through a little interview before they volunteer in our elementary schools as reading buddies so that became hugely successful of course the kids love it so the more and we've talked about this before the more high school students we can get involved coming into our after school programs at the elementary level especially i think that'll help with the the tutor aspect of um, serving the students uh, the second thing is the addition of power hour at the elementary schools and i know that um, christy talked about that earlier uh, the power hour so our goal how it's written in the grant is that we serve 60 students at each school and that would be regular attendees regular attendees that's considered attending 30 days or more of the after school programs um, with the addition of power hour this year it <coughs> opened up 30 more spaces at each elementary and targeting <coughs> ELL students for language development reading and writing and that's been great um, pretty seamless process as far as going from 60 to 90 students at each elementary um, and with the addition of more staff obviously that that's been really helpful and um, we had our i think last time we were here we of course had the students come i also talked about the bell bazaar that was our first um, <coughs> fundraising event we've ever attempted and between that and community donations we raised over six thousand dollars our goal was ten thousand so we fell short of our goal but um, we were told we wouldn't bring in six thousand so i guess i should feel pretty good um, it was fun. Uh, Amber Zhu, who coordinated that event, uh, did a fantastic job. Um, we got good feedback. We didn't have as many in, in attendance as we would have liked, but that's why it was our first, I guess. Um, we have, I just want, to, we serve about 300 students a day between our five schools and one of the things I'm proud about is um, the staff that continues to return. We had 71% staff retention from and 89% of all the on the bell staff is WU students. So we just got done with parent surveys, just asking parents, how are we doing serving you? And one of the questions comes back often and i would like to share this just so that you understand it while you're talking to community members is we aligned our calendar this year for after school programs with the woo calendar more than we ever have in the last three years and it's because of that 89 percent um some people have asked why don't you start the first week of school and and you know late and WU doesn't start until the last week in September, so that's why we start at the same time. It also <laughs> takes us a while to identify students. There's a process that um, helps us identify students who will be the best fit for Beyond the Bell, and that's a process that involves teachers, administrators, the school-based uh, counselors, etc because we typically get more applications at the elementary level than we have spaces for uh, at I 
IES and Ash Creek uh, especially. So um, one of the ways we save money this year, Teresa Henderson <laughs> at uh, our high school, she's a retired science teacher. She also went through the admin program at U of O and she loves data, she loves evaluation, anything she can crunch and graph, and so she is a great right-hand person in addition to being the site coordinator at the high school. Um, she developed two different science curriculums in collaboration with the other site coordinators and then trained them on that to deliver to students, so that was great. Um, we had 13 teachers this year participate in our after-school programs with our clubs um, and all the different clubs, you know, chess, 3D, printing, coding. We have board member um, that wore a different hat, Steve, uh, that did coding at both the middle school and elementary school, and I think he learned a lot through that process. So, so it was great. It was great, great to get more people involved and um, asking about after-school programs. Questions for Karen? Any questions or? No question, but just a great big thank you, Karen. Yeah, you thank you. I enjoy it. It's a challenge, but it's it's a good challenge. So <laughs> thank you for allowing us to continue. Thank you. So Dan and Ellen, your band of And traumatized people. Good evening. I'll let them come up here with me. I'm Danielle Vanderlinden. I'm the trauma informed coordinator at the high school, um, and I am working under a grant, one of two in the state that Central High School has been lucky enough to receive. And we're really excited about the work we are doing. So. I'm going to give you just a brief context and then I'm really going to let these guys tell you a few short stories about how trauma-informed approaches have been rolling out at the high school and we're excited about it. Um, so we're working under the definition that a trauma-informed school realizes the widespread impact of trauma and the role schools can play in promoting resiliency. And I'm really looking at that as being our year one, kind of foundational, laying that out in, and helping people realize what trauma is. And then recognizing the signs and impacts of trauma in students, families, and staff. Responding by fully integrating knowledge about trauma into policies, procedures, and practices, and actively seeking to resist re-traumatization of students and staff. And what I'm so excited about is that we have moved into actively resisting and responding to students that we are seeing who may be experiencing trauma. And that's what we will talk about this evening. Um, so that's the work we're doing at the high school. Without further ado, I'm going to just um, let these guys get the ball going. So, Ben? Hi. So one of the things we've been learning about is the idea of a heartbeat. And, uh, uh, not the conventional sense of a heartbeat, but the heartbeat as a, a idea of kind of doing formative assessment, but not of content, but of our students' emotional uh, state when they come into the room. Uh, figuring out what that is, and how to do that in a way that is you know, quick, so that we're not taking up a, a ton of our instructional time, but that allows us to be sensitive to where they're at so that we can maximize that instructional time. So uh, one thing that I've taken doing is just Going out into the hall, and part of this is the geography of my room. Uh, if you've been in the high school building and you've seen where my room is, uh, there's a staircase, and so a lot of the students are passing by. And so I just stand out there, and as my students are coming in, and as all my former students are going by, because I teach the freshmen, uh, I just give them all a high five and ask them how they're doing. And it's been noteworthy and kind of surprising to me how quickly I've been able to learn to tell where they're at and how you know, willing students are in their own way to let me know when there's something wrong. And it gives me an opportunity to pull a student aside and say, you know, how can I help you out today? Do you need a minute? You know, that kind of thing. And, and just kind of, uh, uh, you know, make that a focus. And it lets them know that they have permission to have their feelings when they walk in the room and that I understand that they're bringing in a lot more important things than semicolons uh, and, and, uh, and that I care about that more than I do about necessarily my own content. So. 
Uh, that's one little trick that I've taken on, and these folks have more clever ones. <laughs> Can I hand this out? <coughs> Did you need we're, we're never too old for show and tell. Um, these are some fidgets that uh, I put together, and I, have, I saved this one for an illustration, but I just want to say that I was able to apply many of the recommendations that have the training that we got for trauma-informed to change the environment in my office. And so over the spring break, I, had, I took some suggestions. I got some help from um, our custodian and uh, one of my sons. And we removed some clutter, which can be distracting and create uh, even more uh, um, issues for kids when they're focused on, on clutter in a room. And put a plant in there. And actually took um, some artwork done by previous students. So we have uh, Vincent Van Gogh's uh, Starry Night on one wall. And it's really nice. And I consider it to be one of the more relaxing pieces that the kids have done. And, and then I've added some of these um, fidgets, if you will. And I just make them available when kids come into uh, the room and talk to me and if they're interested. And this particular one was, you know, most of you are familiar with Rubik's Cube. Well, there was a gentleman that I actually was um, interviewing uh, for an issue. And he saw this over there. I could tell he was interested. And I said, hey, go ahead and check it out. And during the whole entire interview, uh, he manipulated this Rubik's Cube. And he didn't really, and normally you think of when people aren't making eye contact with you that maybe they're not being honest, but really he was being honest. And, and one of the administrators commented they could tell that he was listening to everything that was said. And I really felt like it made him, uh, or it encouraged him to be more forthcoming. And, and uh, he pretty much told me everything that uh, he needed to tell me <laughs> while he was uh, manipulating the Rubik's Cube. And then he pretty much solved it. Uh, and then gave it back to me, so I really can't complain. But that's just an example. Next. Mine requires a little setup. Right off tomorrow, we'll kind of quick, it was getting heavy. That's fine. <laughs> Something I learned from a colleague a long time ago. Something called a cool up corner. Back corner of my classroom, I have a place where students who need to have a little bit of a refocus or just uh, feeling really overwhelmed or just need to have two very intense moments with Mr. White have a place for that to happen. So I went to a garage sale and I bought an old high back chair that would be out of place anywhere other than where it is. The students have decided it smells mostly like peanut butter, but we're not 100% sure about that either. <laughs> I uh, had a colleague whose uh, wife helped me make these. They're just uh, this is a tea uh, bottle full of glitter and vegetable oil. And those kids have worn them out. It's true, the freshmen will try to drink them, so you have to be kind of fast. <laughs> but they have just done so much to give them something to manipulate when on those rare occasions when I'm not scintillating, it does happen. <laughs> there are things for them to color, mandalas, different kind of art things reflecting their mood. They have a little art gallery in the back, some that's a little frightening. Or they can post their work when they're finished. This is the third hourglass I have. They break. This one's for five minutes, so sometimes if I need somebody to have five minutes in the cool out corner, we'll put it up there so we both know when I'm coming back there to have a conversation with them. Things like this help students refocus. It also keeps them in the classroom of having a classroom management issue and all the normal things aren't working. This gives them a place to refocus. After a while, the environment becomes one where students know, sometimes it takes a look and sometimes it doesn't, that they just need to go back to the cool out corner for a few minutes and refocus. So it's worked really well for me this year. One of the things I like to start off the year with is this ridiculous tree poster. Um, Rich, you're mostly on. What would you describe that uh, picture as being? Picture of a tree in a field. I appreciate that. Uh, it's really forthright. <laughs> Steve, what, what do you see? I'm thinking I'm waiting to see the horse come walk across through the. Steve, you're bringing your own issues in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> can, you just, can you just tell us what's there? I, I love the tree and the, the field and see, the. See, honestly, about it. you guys have agreed. What color would you say the tree is? Well, if I'm this way, it looks. Looks like it's in the fall with orange leaves, but this way it looks like snow. So would you it changes as you move it, but right now it looks like fall. 
turns out now. Uh, uh, Buzz, you're a clear-eyed uh, gentleman. What would you see? I'd say it's a green tree in a, in a nice green uh, pasture. So I always ask my students, you know, who's telling the truth and who isn't? They will say, oh, maybe what you see depends on where you're looking from. It can be a really nice lesson in perspective. And oftentimes I'll have students who uh, aren't, aren't my students who are brought in by my students to show them this, and they'll say, what color is the tree? <laughs> <laughs> My wife brought me, I'll close with this, it comes from West Africa and it's got a tabletop It has these kind of etched lines and these faces that are facing each other at some distance. It represents the faces we show each other. Sometimes when I'm having a personality conflict with a student, I'll use this. I'll say, no, you're over here and I'm over here and this is what we know about each other. But I'll bet you there's stuff under the surface that I don't know about you and maybe that you don't know about me, although you maybe have guessed. And after we talk for a while, I'll take that lid away and remind them that like these, the stand for this table, all of us are carved from the same block of wood. Have a lot of the same things in common. And sometimes students can really uh, react to that in a positive way. So it's been really successful for me and over the years I've stolen ideas from colleagues and continue to add to it. Sometimes I have to replace the tree because if you have a substitute, sometimes the students take it apart to see how it works. pretty <laughs> <laughs> cheap. So, Trauma-informed care is one of the most powerful things that I've seen in my short time at Central. It's paying huge dividends in my classroom and in the English hallway, and I hear good things all across the building. So I want to congratulate you guys and the leadership it took to bring that to our school that really is working. So thank you for helping build that positive environment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anna Larson, and um, we have been working um, with Danielle Van Buren on um, trauma and care, informed care and how to kind of roll that out in our school. And so the Power Peer class, they're kind of being our guinea pigs and, and since, and they've been fantastic. And um, one of the things that we did here recently is um, we did some trauma informed training, and Danielle came in and we spent um, about a week and a half with the kids, and we um, talked about what it was, and they took the ACES survey, um, which is adverse childhood experiences and it was really great for the kids um, to kind of understand that and to kind of see where they were all coming from and not that they had to share out their own scores but we put that information into um, just into like a little PowerPoint for them to look at and see and we were able to share that with the staff and the staff had also taken the ACES survey earlier this year and so when we compared those two um, <coughs> it was really similar our classroom setting with the power care kids as to what our um, like those experiences were with our staff um, and so that was, you know, kind of nice for, I think, a lot of our staff to see that a lot of our students had also gone through a lot of traumatic experiences. Um, and with our students, then we did the Paper Tiger film study, and they had different questions that they answered, and it was really engaging for the students, whether it was something that they could relate to on their own, or that they could see friends or family members and some of those students who were um, featured in the film. And then we talked with the students about resiliency and how that's like, that's what we really want to focus on is how do we build that resiliency in our students and how can they become those resilient learners. And so they're really excited and we've got a team of them ready to go next year. They're going to be working with Danielle um, through our class and we're also hoping to um, work with ASBEC and Mr. Roberts um, so that we can get more of our students involved in rolling it out school-wide and possibly even like across the district. So um, it's been great. So thank you. Sorry, I make a lot of noise when I move. Um, so I'm Yvonne Cranford Tim. I'm a new math teacher at the high school and um, was pretty excited to be able to be a part of the trauma informed care um, this year. So I'm here to talk to you about the coffee chats that we've been having this semester. Uh, it's just a time for staff to come together. They're at 7.15 in the morning. The staff can kind of show up, you know, as they come in. Um, but it's just a time for us to come together and talk about ways to implement trauma-informed practices in our classroom, hallways, um, meetings, any inter interactions with each other. So we've had, what, four, five, yeah, four, anyway, the topics uh, this semester have been levels of stress, flipping your lid, which is a way to understand the brain in crisis, shared implementation ideas, reflecting on how we as a staff are received by students. And I find it really helpful. It gives us an opportunity to kind of look at research. Um, you know, Danielle sh shares things with us and then we can discuss how 
that kind of plays out in our classrooms or issues that we're facing and it's just kind of a really nice time to um, really discuss how to address certain issues. And so I've certainly appreciated it and I know many of our staff have as well. So. Good evening, I'm Brett Baldwin. I'm one of the assistant principals at the high school. And uh, I'd like to talk to you about how we use uh, this approach with uh, getting the heartbeat with our staff. Um, I'm on part of a, a team that meets every week for a student support team. And uh, it's been one of those teams that uh, has moved, ebb and flowed uh, members in and out. We're trying to get some traction of the way we operate. And uh, this year, we had a lot of uh, good new energy come into the team and really try to restructure it. Um, but yet it felt a little disjointed and um, we sat around and talked and uh, we decided that we needed to change the way our, our meetings were going. Um, we were just all business and kind of just running through things and we just really wanted to be a more efficient team and uh, get some of our things uh, aligned together and we decided that start taking the heartbeat with staff and what that means is that when we start a meeting uh, we'll go around the table and we have to um, we get to or we choose to uh, select a color and tell people why we pick that color and it kind of gives you a little insight to people's moods and what they're going through personally and it's just a kind of a check-in process uh, to get grounded everybody and it takes about five minutes uh, but it's really given us a different feel to our meetings and this, uh, the staff on this team has really responded well to it and we show up every Wednesday uh, ready to report our color and why and get our meeting started. It's been a pretty successful tool as our feedback that we're getting from our team. So, Danielle. <coughs> so that's what we have for kind of a formal share out this evening. So are there any questions? So has everybody received trauma-informed training? High school. Everybody at the high school has received trauma-informed training. Uh, there was a, a full day training session back in October and then we've rolled out professional development um, kind of uh, as appropriate throughout the rest of the year. Yeah, book study next year. Next year book study, so we'll all continue to read about it and be trained in more depth. I also wanted to introduce a page that looks like this. These are our summer maintenance projects. There's hardly any of them, as you will notice. Um, typically, we've, we've had several hundred thousand dollars worth of projects to do. This year, we are focusing on the Ashbury boiler replacement and very little else. Um, Talmadge will be getting sort of the bulk of the work Without the bond passing, we need to do some more work to enlarge the cafeteria, the space that we used temporarily this year, and make it more usable. So that is our um, summer maintenance report. Not much there. I also have a transportation report for you, and these poor guys going last, considering they're the ones who have to be up earliest in this district uh, tomorrow. I'd like to introduce some folks from our transportation department to tell you about their fill the bus projects. So, John Kerr and Don Walker, could you please come forward? All right, so uh, we'll be brief. Um, talking about the 2017 fill the bus campaign. Uh, it's been ongoing. I'm surprised when I look back in the, the files online that it's been going on for what, 10 years. It's been, it started a long time ago and then it, people just didn't do it anymore as people were retired, nobody took it on. So in 2012, we started it back up again and it's been great ever since. So all of the proceeds um, from our efforts go to the Ella Coran Food Bank right here in Independence. Um, what we do is we organize a fill the bus event at Bymart and Roths. We actually have a school bus down there and staff members uh, collecting donations from the community as they emerge from the store. Um, we also, I leveraged the Beyond the Bell program this year to build me some cool little boxes to put into the schools. There were <laughs> of all sorts. And uh, so we collect from the schools uh, and the district office here. Um, 
we leverage, uh, lean on our people at completely at, at transportation to manage the event and run it and be there to participate from nine to three on the Saturdays that we do those events. Uh, we have family members that turn out. Uh, my daughter brings softball people and they dress up in banana suits and other stuff and run around. Uh, so it really is kind of a, an extended family turnout for us as a, as a team building. It's an opportunity for the parents to come out and meet the bus drivers as well that they may never even see. So. Yeah, we have a lot of little ones that like to climb up in the bus and get a personal tour. Uh, so this year's results, um, we combine, combining the store events, the school collections, and actually this year the district had some green beans that they donated to us. Um, so we brought in 4,655 pounds of food and $140 in cash. Nice job. successful. Yep, that's it. Thanks, guys. And I got to tell you, the banana, out, you, <laughs> the banana outfit is worth it attracts attention. Oh my God. It, it, watching people get into it is a weekend of enjoyment. Thank you. Uh, you'll see that enrollment shows we're ending the year exactly where we ended it last year, 3,222 students. Uh, based on information that we've been sharing all year long, you'll see that the elementary um, actually is nine, nine students shorter or less than it was last year and the secondary student or schools are nine students more so i think it's indicative we've talked about our enrollment being relatively flat or consistent or predictable i think you're seeing that it tends to be that way the shape of the uh, uh graph the numbers that are involved seem to be predictable what uh, you also see in the back of that is that we have projected what our, pro what, what our projected total was going to be and then where we were at. What I can tell you is we projected that we would have 1,514 elementary students. We ended up with 1,523. We projected that we would have a total of 785 uh, middle school students. We ended up with 759. We said at the high school we'd have 974, we end up with 940. So you see there where the changes are, but I think it supports what we've talked about in that it, it's relatively flat as far as enrollment is concerned. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't mean we can tell you that the exact number of elementary kids born five years ago is, or yeah, five years ago is exactly you know balanced throughout the district. But, those are the numbers that are looked at enrollment wise. So, any question on enrollment at all? We've stayed we've stayed flat. The, the difference that we've done is we've allowed it to catch up to us. So we are we're going to have to watch enrollment next year because we're right at the. I mean, we're right there. We've allowed it to catch us, um, but it's we're right at the numbers. So. We'll start above what our number is that we've turned into ODE next year, but we're going to have to be careful as we come through. <clears throat> End of the year activities, uh, of course, gosh, it's just amazing. End of the year is here. Uh, this Friday, of course, is graduation. 7 o'clock down at uh, high school, a rain or shine. There are parking spots that will be available down by the stadium or, or down by the turf. Uh, we do have, uh, we are looking to try to get a tarp, or excuse me, a, a tent um, uh, to protect us if we can. Uh, we will make a decision midweek with regards to the music component of it because of course to have all of the music down there you have to have about $30,000 worth of sound boards down there and then one rain and that's we're out that so um, we'll be making we're, we're making adjustments as the week goes but we would like to have you in the uh gymnasium at 6 30 by 6 30 on friday night if in fact you're not going to be able to attend please let adriana know so she can tell us there's there's not a tremendous amount of room up on the stage I know here, I think it was either last year or the year before, Steve 
Mosher and I tried to bump each other off. We thought it was a cross check from the. Uh, that chair is awful close to the other. Boy, it was. <laughs> I thought one of us was going. So uh, if you're not going to be there, please uh, let Adriana uh, know so we can make arrangements. Then Wednesday, June 14th at 7:30 is the um, year-end breakfast at the high school. And uh, at that point in time, we celebrate all of our retirees and get one last moment together. Unfortunately, this year, and it's, it, I think it happens, what, Denise, every three or four years? What's the cycle? Not very often. But it, there's a cycle where uh, uh, the, the year ends with our classified staff not working that extra day. And this is one of those years, so certainly we will invite them, and hopefully they will intend. Uh, but the uh, uh, their last day is is Tuesday the 13th, so it's Wednesday, the uh, 14th of of uh, June at 7:30 is the uh, uh, <coughs> dinner. Couple of breakfast, breakfast. They could eat dinner too, it wouldn't matter. Uh, then. Uh, Quick thing, I'm going to revert these a little bit. What well, quick thing we have, very, very positive. I got an email uh, here a, a couple of uh, weeks ago and uh, was tempted on the weekend when I received it to just send in the yes and, uh, you know, we're going to go. And then I thought, wait a minute, you need to ask folks. You just better. It seemed like a no-brainer. So over the weekend, I, I started fa uh, emailing folks and... Uh, it was such a good idea, they responded over the weekend. But every school year, the Oregon School of Appeals Court travels to different schools and allows the students to observe oral arguments on real cases that are on appeal. Additionally, students are given the opportunity to interact with the judges and ask questions about our legal system and how the court's decisions are made. Most of the logistics of the site visit are handled by the Court of Appeals staff. The whole school only needs to provide a space such as an auditorium, gym or a smaller community um, can use the local courthouse. In this case, Judge Darlene Ortega of the Oregon Court of Appeals extended the offer to Central High School for the 2017-18 school year. So next year there will be in fact a real case argued uh, in front of our student body in the, uh, from the Oregon Court of Appeals, which is a, a, a unique and um, uh, very, uh, uh, very prestigious opportunity for us to get involved, and it means more than many of us. Then you weren't, uh, you weren't a, a uh, suspect in the last. Defendant? No. <laughs> you weren't. No. <laughs> well, but you're sitting next to the perpetrator. Right. Oh, true. I, I did. Yeah. Do you want me to? You want to? You want to go ahead and confess here since you've been on uh, it? Apparently, and according to. Uh, it, with much cachet with students, I murdered David Hume. <laughs> um, uh, what happened, apparently, was that we went to a meeting um, and uh, he, we argued over whether or not students should use cell phones in the, in the classroom and we disagreed to the point where I murdered him and many of the students have thanked me. <laughs> uh, this was all part of a forensic a forensics class um, they, I actually did not know I was the murderer until they let me know. Um, I had to provide uh, both truths and not so much, and they had to wheedle it down. I tried to put it on Chris Jordan uh, very purposefully, but they saw through it all, and it turns out I, I done it. <laughs> Thanks for the shout out. <laughs> she almost got away with it. Next year I know they're going to try to. Don't for those rotten kids. <laughs> I know next year they're going to try to turn that into where we have a, 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 a trial then to try to prove uh, that fact. So, um, but I wanted to get you, let you know about the Court of Appeals. And then earlier this month, it was really interesting. I'm not known as being real quiet, and I walk in such a way that is not real quiet. But somehow, on a Saturday afternoon, myself and Rich and Cease and Dory. And uh, who else is it? Lissa? You know, um, snuck into the back of a room, and we must have been all of eight feet behind. And as we were watching this person up front announce the employee of the year, 
for uh, the OSEA statewide. statewide. And so this person is just sitting there, and somehow we all got into the room, and then the, the uh, person up there said, and the employee of the year this year is from our Region 3, Denise Chase. And Denise was a little bit uh, uh, taken back, and then he said something about that's why all these people are here. And she turned out to the oh! <laughs> And what was really fun was just as she would watch and think, she'd say, oh, Buzz, you're here. And then she'd come back and all of a sudden, oh, Rich. No, Rich was the last one that got sick. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was oh, if you're going to embarrass me, tell it right. Thanks. Oh, yeah. I think it was, uh, uh, Cease was then, and then Dory, and then some of us, Somehow, Rich in his Oregon hat blended in. Did you have an Oregon sweatshirt? No, Linfield. Oh. Linfield. That's what threw me off. She didn't, she didn't recognize him, but certainly a great honor for the district. We have a, a, a ice cream social to honor her at the high school. But you know, I want a couple things. I know this is a statewide situation where she was recognized by the state, and it's the first time that that Region Three has ever had a representative. So Denise. I wanted to officially at a board meeting recognize and congratulate you on being here. <laughs> and with that, sir, that concludes my report. My final report. That's his final report. Congratulations, oh. Denise, and thanks for all the work you do with her. There, there will be a trophy that I need to have housed somewhere <coughs> as well, so. There will also be a tiara. There's also yes, <laughs> someone in the room will be wearing a tiara the at the entire. Uh, Just to wear all of it. That's sweet out to see. No, you don't. No, you won't. Oh, yeah. I trust Carol and Jodine. I'm yeah. sure we'll get pictures. I'm sure I can't trust them, so I'm sure you'll see them. Okay, so Steve Mosher, you're doing the board report tonight? Well, it says on the page this here, it says you, but on the front it says me, so I defer to you. This is a foreshadowing of things to come. So actually, my, I'll do the update, but next month we will actually be doing the election of officers, is that what's called? But mm -hmm. uh, my two-year term as chair is up, and our tradition is every year we, we do this in July, and I will step down and then we will typically nominate the vice chair, and Steve is serving as the vice chair. We don't strictly have to do that, but that's what we've been doing, and then we will need to identify a vice chair, so if anybody is interested uh, in that or not, you might not want to come to the next, but you better come to the next Somebody to defend yourself. I mean, we'll be not representatives, never say. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I actually won't be here next month, so you'll get to actually be vice chair and then run the meeting and then and do the election. Yeah, election. Okay. And then we will also be swearing in our new board member, Christina. Uh, and Steve will I'll save some comments to the end, but he won't be here. So, um, and that meeting is on the 10th of July. So. Different from what Zach said, there actually is a meeting next month. No. <laughs> he's just there. He's not going to be there. Yeah. Zach will run. He's done. So I think I'll just limit it to that. Any questions? I mean, you can see the dates. And that's, that's all stuff that you need to be tracking. So with that, let's move on to our consent agenda. And are there any specific mentions here for the consent agenda? Well, Kind of yes and kind of no. Uh, one of the things that you'll see in there, if you haven't read it, you'll notice the bottom line in the retirements. Certain uh, gentleman, Mr. McFarland, uh, is um, retiring, and that while I appreciate a lot of what we've been hearing, I, I tell you, I tell you. Truly, 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 without the entire administrative group that we have here, none of our work would be done. None of the things that we've accomplished. I don't care 
you know, if it's people who have left, if it's people who are here but without the administrative group, principals, district office, C's, Rich, uh, Dory, um, none of it would happen. And, uh, Rich, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy for you, but I'm sad for the school district. I just wanted to point that out that it's in the consent agenda. Julia. Oh, and I'm. <laughs> cool, she's good. I'm happy to advocate for myself, so it's good. It's on her plan. It's on my plan. I met my goal, so thank you. <laughs> I'm so, you know, I love you to death, you little brat. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> okay, um, with that, I'll entertain a motion for approving the consent agenda. Second. All in favor of approving the consent agenda, please raise your right hand. Passes unanimously. That brings us to our business agenda. Dory? If you recall two months ago, I talked about coming into compliance with Division 22 and that we needed to go through the process of formally adopting curriculum. So on for um, a motion tonight. Um, there is a mistake that I made. Um, big ideas, we actually adopted that for the high school math program last June. <laughs> and I went back and double checked the minutes. It's a done deal. So on for tonight, um, Eureka Math, which is our K-5. And um, we've been using that for four years. It started out as a bridge curriculum. And um, the feedback from the schools is that do not change it. We need to keep going. And then core focus on math um, was originally written years ago um, by Shannon McCaw and company, uh, math teachers in Oregon. And they were the first ones to jump on board with Common Core and have kept up to date with it. And Talmadge has been using that for also four years. So both of those are on for tonight as um, formal adoption. Any questions? So we're adopting curriculum we've been using for four years. <laughs> exactly. This is Division 22. <laughs> so if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Pretty much. So I move that we approve the math curriculum adoption for K through 5 being Eureka Math and K through 8 being core focus on math. Not K through eight. Six, six through eight. eight. K through five, and then six through eight. Oh, I said K. Yeah, I'm sorry. Six through eight. Is there a second? I'll second it now. <laughs> right. Okay, all in favor of adopting the motion to adopt the math curriculum? As described by Steve, raise your right hand. <laughs> that is correct. The passage unanimously. Right, thank we'll, you. We'll, that we have been. Um, Using for the last uh, two to three years, the the adjustment from uh, that occurred from last year to this year is in the past we've had two options of a student body card at the high school: a five dollar option and a twenty dollar option. The difference between the five dollar option and the twenty dollar option is that for five dollars it's an identification card; for twenty dollars you get discounts in the free foot, uh, athletic events and the dances. There's part of the money that goes to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, uh, partially goes to athletics, part of the money goes to student body, and part of the money goes to a small piece, it goes to uh, 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 power peers. Uh, last year, that $20, or excuse me, the $5 option went away, and we've had just the $20 option available. If you go back, one of the proud things of mine is I look back as you as you look at the, the things. When we first came here five years ago, our uh, athletic participation fee was significantly higher, and our family participation fees were significantly higher. And we had, of course, no athletics at the middle school, and now we have athletics at the middle school. We have significantly lower participation fees than we had previously, and as you check throughout the various surrounding districts, significantly lower than many, many districts in the area. Most often, you'll see they're up in the 80s or close to $100 in, in other sports. So I, I uh, salute you for your ability to uh, uh, help us uh, 
be able to maintain affordability for our students and, and, and everything. As you work your way across, you'll see under the activity project fee, case, wood shop, welding, arts, crafts, <coughs> excuse me, tech theater, production workshop, stage makeup, and construction engineering are all classes. And they're all classes that have a, um, uh, some sort of a take home uh, type project that you can get involved in. So, questions on that? <coughs> Case is the curriculum for agricultural <coughs> science, science education. education. Yeah. And what's the um, middle school student activity ID? <coughs> Perry? Pardon? Middle school student ID? It's, the ID should be off there. It is the middle school activity fee. So it pays for all those extra activities that we do for kids. So I, I have an issue of charging kids to take education classes, and I, you know, I, just, I just feel like we're going to level the playing field for equal education for all kids, charging for education classes to go away. I, I don't believe in it at all. I mean, we're supposed to be offering a free education, and then we're charging for an education class. What I can tell you is in many cases, those classes would go away because the extra costs are significant. And in almost every one of those cases, it's something that they are bringing home with them. It's something that they are bringing in, building, and then taking with them, or bringing in, and in some way, shape, or form, consuming their consumables. It's not part of necessarily the educational process. Technical theater, they have props that they're building, they have... Um, it's makeup. They yeah. Up there. I mean, they're... they're it, it's, it's a theater class, but there's, they're, they're building props, they're doing... I um, can't think of costumes, or what the heck do they call clothes? <laughs> <laughs> they're doing props, they're doing costumes, sets. they're doing sets, thank you. Ben. They're doing all that sort of stuff that um, are additional costs, you also have in the tech theater, you also have uh, some, <clears throat> some substantial costs. Uh, as an example, we did uh, Aladdin Junior this year instead of Aladdin. And one of the reasons we did is because the um, uh, fee for Aladdin Junior is about $1,400, which is about a half to a third of what it is for Aladdin. So we, we didn't do Aladdin because it would have cost us about 5000 bucks. So um, all those extra things that come in where kids get the opportunity to participate in that are over and above a class, this is extra, just like athletics and things of that nature that are extra. Well, I, these are all electives. They're all electives. But kids need electives to graduate. I, mean, I guess you could make a case to say, well, okay, <coughs> Johnny doesn't have to pay for woodshop. How come he gets to take a project on when I don't get to take anything on? So I noticed that it says um, students that have eligible, that are eligible for free and reduced meals may have scholarship scholarships. Mm -hmm. So do kids have to ask for that, or do the parents have to ask for it? Just like they do in every school in every district, whether it's fees or anything that they come in on, they point out they're on free and reduced. Because yeah. we can't. We have no way of identifying them. We can't tie those records together, right? So they have to self-identify. Well, as an old shop teacher, they looking at this. The kids are getting off pretty cheap. But that's per project. Ten dollars per project. Yeah, ten bucks. You might you might have some kids that. No, it's ten dollars no, plus per project. Yeah. Yeah. But you might have like a welding class. So they might have plus fees per project. If, if they go out, if they're going to build a large um, build a trailer, uh, on their choice. trailer or oh, okay. chest of drawers or something, they don't pay for it. But if they want to, like in most of those classes, <coughs> the welding class, for example, if all they want to do is learn to weld, so they take scrap metal and weld it together in all the different positions and 
There'll be ten. Kinds of rotten stuff that are ten bucks, which is. And trust me, I, I just approved the, the rod for the for for that. It's just, a lot more than ten bucks. Yeah, just even when I was in school, there was some base charges for like my I I love wood shop, and so that ten dollars probably goes and helps pay for the the materials the school has to buy for showing the students how to use the saws properly and stuff like that. And then when you pick your project, you got to pay for your project. But you know, there's you know that helps helps out. And, in, in purchasing those things that you know get used and are, are, are useless afterwards and it's not something that you know everybody participating in the in the workshop participate you know that's an opportunity for them to learn something like he was saying you know there's some basic welding that you're going to learn you know they got to buy materials to start out with and you know, that kind of so, so to Peggy's question uh, uh, one thing I might suggest is we, we could proceed with this this year, but then um, we talked about Measure 98 funding. It might behoove us to do a complete review of you know, the total amount of funding that we're generating through fees. I don't remember seeing the total numbers at a board meeting. I don't know that it's a board action other than approving the fees. But They're in a good. separate fund, but it's such a in small amount we don't identify it so it's just part of our general grants donations and student body activities so if, if i were to total this all up for a year are we talking about five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars i don't track those funds individually no, you're just looking for i don't even know i uh, because they don't want a student not to get a class or not to take the class because of their, because of economic disadvantage and I, I, I want my classes to be available for everyone. And we're talking about leveling the field for and closing that achievement gap. Well, if we're going to close the gap, I think we, I think we need to start having conversations about closing, closing the economic gaps as well. No, 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 there isn't one of those classes that a kid has kept out of. Okay. And they're oversubscribed. Almost every one of them is oversubscribed. So I don't know how we would. Okay. I mean, we, we can't offer more sections of them, and they're oversubscribed. Where I, where I was going is to just do an accounting and ask that question: What's the yeah. total spend? Mm -hmm. Is it the revenue that we're generating? What's it being used for? Mm -hmm. You know, is it true? And what's the total? Yeah. I mean, it would be worth having a little bit more of a report than just approving the fees, so that when this comes around next year, we have that level of back background. So it could be. I assume it wouldn't be that difficult nope. to prepare nope. Nope. for a future board meeting. We'll provide that for you. And then, if, if there are concerns, then we have a day. Yeah, because we, yeah. yeah, we don't know. I don't know when kids are not taking it because they can't afford it. I don't know. I don't know how much this generates and how much it's being used for. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, do we have a motion then? So, given that we'll, we'll review that at a future board meeting, I might have a motion off this three schedule. There is our second. Thank you, Darcy. Any further questions? Okay, all in favor of approving the fee schedule as presented, please raise your right hand. And that passes unanimously. And then we move into the necessary resolutions to adopt the budget, and they are specific and are listed. Those were not, they were handed to you separately, I believe. We didn't talk about like this front and back, a separate piece of paper. I think that was just on your station tonight. Oh. <laughs> we got a lot of extra handouts tonight. So. I'll, I'll go back. No, it has to be very, very specific. Um, no, you want, unless you want to wait, you can, you can move the, uh, there's nothing of any consequence in the uh, policy that you want to move those to. Let's go ahead and, yeah, we could do that. Well, we could just switch to that topic. Let's go ahead and move to the board policy updates, first reading. 
if you look at the first readings of the board policies, those that are highlighted in yellow are not being recommended to you for your adoption. Those that are, are highlighted in yellow either are, are uh, <coughs> policies that we know currently do not have, or in one case, there's a version three where we use version one in our, in our, um, in our policy handbook, with the exception of one, and that is ING and the INGAR. ING and INGAR is the policy as it relates to animals and uh, service animals in the buildings. And Julia is doing a lot of work uh, uh, with that specific uh, policy to make sure that, what are you smiling about, Ken? <laughs> she didn't lose a fifth grader to your kindergarten. <laughs> The, uh, uh, Julia is doing a lot of work in our special ed department getting ING correct. So I, I'm re my recommendation to you is the current ING and the ING are in, in the offer to us by OSCD is not sufficient and we're working on improving that. The rest are really minimal. This is a, a month of minimal um, impact revisions where we're talking about. Probably the biggest one is the professional development one. Uh, GCL slash GDL, and that's because there's an elimination of a tremendous amount of language that is brought down into just very minimal. Uh, uh, so, uh, as you look at those, uh, no substantive changes, and all the ones in yellow are not being referred to you for your review. So, what's uh, just a quick question what's behind the academic integrity? It, it's just a statement, if you go back to it, it's just a statement talking about, um, it's actually only a half page. I was just trying to figure out why it, it's new, if I understand this correctly. It is new, it is. And what's it addressing? It's just making a, a, um, a an assumption of the, um, oh, how would I say it? It's just making an assumption of what we're already doing. You know, it's um, a pretty nominal. Uh, making an assumption of honor policy. Yeah. Like what? An honor, honor policy. policy. Right. So it's, it's basically a, a we don't allow cheating honest, right? Right. Right. We have that. Yeah, but this is board policy. So that would be the the uh, referral to you for first reading of these policies. So is this the time that we can talk about some of the stuff that's in here, or is that kind of the next time we can talk about it? can give you the time. Because on policy number um, GCL, um, I was reading it, and um, the last sentence in the first paragraph, it says the plan shall be developed in writing by district administration. and. Um, to me, it seems like a top-down directive, and it's not very collaborative. And so, is that typical? How is it typical for staff development to be just directed by, by <coughs> administration, or is it more of a collaborative effort? It says the plan should be developed by. To me, developed by is, in my mind, developed by is through the processes that that uh, are involved. And when the processes are involved, include the uh, ad council, include teachers' involvement, includes everything. It's not delineated and it's developed by putting the responsibility of accumulation uh, into administratively. It would come through the DLT, the BLT, and all those various development components. I think that's the intent. I mean, if you have some language. So I was just wondering if, if the plan shall be developed and written by district, uh, by district administration in collaboration with. Which, which one? Um, is, is GCL. That's from a process standpoint. I think what we could do is you could suggest that word edit between now and our next board meeting. Uh, I think that would, that suggestion would go to Adriana. If you want to just write her a note, okay. and then in our second reading, we can come back to that. I think the 
it's, it's a good pickup uh, to keep our attention to be spelled out both of them. I think what Russ described is exactly what we're trying to do. Right, they don't spell it out. It could be a little bit more explicit in our version of the policy. Any other comments? That was a good one. Okay, uh, do I have a motion to approve the policy changes in our board packet for first reading? So moved. Thank you, Steve. Is there a second? <coughs> Thank you, Steve. Closure? All in favor of uh, the motion to approve the proposed policy updates on the first reading, please raise your right hand. Thank you. And now that takes us back to our budget motions. Thank you. I think they are on the printer, which ran out of paper, which <coughs> jammed up. And so I went to the other printer. I apologize. Um, again, these are a variety of motions. They are numbered for you. They are our legal obligation to adopt, first of all, the entire budget. Uh, the entire budget includes amounts you will appropriate or allow for expenditure and also include unallocated funds. In this case, in our district, our unallocated funds, we have some grants that we don't expend in this fiscal year because they actually roll over and they go through the federal fiscal year. So we always end up with some unallocated funds there. The other funds that we are um, not allocating at this time are is our PERS reserve. We are reserving that for the future budget year. So the amount in number one is the total budget amount for all funds. Motion number two then is nearly the appropriations, the part that you are authorizing the district to actually spend. Um, and then on the back, we move to two motions, one of them establishing the rate for ta property tax, um, property taxes for the assessed value. One of those is the permanent rate, which we get for our operating funds. The second is our general obligation to pay off our bonds. And then motion number four looks pretty much the same, but it's not establishing the rate, it's establishing the purpose. And then we'll go into a couple of other resolutions um, that are in your packet regarding our banks and designating folks who work for us, such as accountants and attorneys. Okay, any questions about the process? Do I have a motion? Motion number one. I move that the Board of Directors of Polk County School District number 13J resolve to adopt the budget for fiscal year 2017-18 in the total amount of $50,148,884 now on file at the District Administration Office. Thank you, Steve. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Jerry. All in favor of approving motion number one as read, please raise your right hand. Passes unanimously. Do I have a motion with regard to motion number two? I move that the Board of Directors of Polk County School District number 13J resolve that the amount shown below totaling $47,690,967 are hereby appropriated for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017 for the purposes shown below. Thank you, Darcy. Is there a second? Thank you, Peggy. All in favor of approving motion number two, as read, please raise your right hand. That passes unanimously. Do I have a proposed or a motion for number three? I'll do number three. I move that the Board of Directors of Polk County School District 13J resolve to impose ad valorem property taxes upon the assessed value of all taxable property within the district for tax year 2017-18. One at the permanent tax rate of $4.8834 for $1,000 of assessed value for operating purposes, and two 
in the amount of $4,059,518 for debt service on general obligation bonds. Thank you, Jerry. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Steve. All in favor of passing motion number three, please raise your right hand. Passes unanimously, and you'll have a motion for motion number four. I move that the Board of Directors of Polk County School District 13J resolve to categorize the taxes imposed for purpose of Article 6, Section 11B as follows. Permanent rate tax subject to the education limit of 4.8834 per thousand dollars of assessment value and general obligation debt service bond series 2009-2013 and 2015 excluded from constitutional limits in the amount of $4,049,518. Oh, $59. $59. Alright. Well, you have to pay our bills. I can restate all of that. <laughs> you have to start over. <laughs> I'll second it. Based on next RC. On that one, real quick, just kind of technical, but it's Article 11, not Article 6. Yeah, I should reread it. What he said. Thank you for the clarification, Steve. All in favor of passing motion number four, please raise your right hand. Thank you. That is passed unanimously. And do I have a motion? I motion to approve the designation of banks for the 2017-18 fiscal year as presented. Wow. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. All in favor of passing motion number five as crisply read by Don. Please raise your right hand. It's the easiest one. We get the time twisters. And he the passes unanimously. So there is, there is one more. There's one more. Really? There is one more. Um, that to make this one better. Not on my list, but if, if your budget is um, F, which is 2017-18 operating resolutions, selecting auditors, insurance agents, attorneys, and adopting the organizational <coughs> chart. So I, I guess that's a... Um, oh, that's part of this. Since I didn't prepare this, and you have to make up your own <coughs> So I move that we adopt the 2017-18 operating resolution selecting auditors, insurance agents, attorneys, and adopting the organizational chart. Thank you, well Steve. Done. Second. And thank you, Don. Any questions or comments about that particular motion? Okay, seeing none. All in favor of passing the motion to ratify the resolutions as described, please raise your right hand. Yeah, that passes unanimously. Okay, that brings us to the end of the meeting. Are there any comments by individual board members? Well, I'd just like to say that I'm going to miss Steve Milligan on the school board. It's been a good ride with you, Steve. Enjoy your leisure time. <laughs> I actually had a couple comments. Uh, one, I want to thank the board for appointing me for this last year. Uh, it's been rewarding to be able to help with the school district. And to actually get to dig deeper than just the budget. It's been really informative. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is somewhat the format and how, how the school board does business. Um, having come from the city side of it, and especially Monmouth in particular, we do a lot more work sessions. And there are a lot of things I wanted to talk about over the year that I've been here that we just never got close to it. And I recognize that there were a few twists and turns that took us away from that. Um, but I really think as the school board moves forward that some, some more time to really look at issues. I mean, one that was brought to the school board's attention tonight was the um, And And I guess 
how that goes out turns out I don't really uh, I mean I do care that the students are first and foremost in that but at the same time as I'm listening to all these parents talk about years and years of their kids going through teen time actually going to college and yet we don't have it in um, Ash Creek Elementary and Long Elementary if it's that powerful of a program why have we not had it there and I think that's where we need time as a, as a school board to really be able to digest those um, topics. And then the other topic that I it's personal to me because I've been able to participate um, with the school district in providing some computer coding classes. I've got a grant application in to see if I can provide some robotics and computer coding classes uh, in the next uh, school year at the elementary and middle school level. But is the STEM and the CTE? My experience as um, doing it is that there's a lot of people in the district that are interested, teachers um, and schools, but they're kind of in silos. Individuals are doing it. There's no real cohesive program where it's consistent from school to school. So some schools, the kids are getting taught at different levels than other kids are. And I really think is the future of where we're going with um, technology and jobs that we really need to, we talked about alignment in, in literacy and math, and I really think that we need to set a priority on the school board for, for CTE and for STEM team so that we make sure that all of our kids have that advantage. The two cities have done a really good job of making sure that uh, Central School District all the schools have just incredible high-speed fiber so that, you know, um, information speed is not a problem. And I just, I wish that we could take more advantage of that as a district um, for our kids. The schools I go into, I'm just amazed. Being a computer geek, it's just, it's frustrating when I walk into computer lab after computer lab and see an empty. Um, and, and we've got, the capacity to do it, it's just, do we have the, the goal to do it? And so in that transition, it just feel, felt odd for me to come from an environment where we really are pretty good about setting goals for each year, where we're going, what we want to accomplish so that things are uh, tangible and measurable. And it, it didn't feel like that here. Um, so I'd really suggest that um, as the transitions are going with new personnel that you really look at that. And maybe that's the conversation that Jennifer's already had with some of you, but that you really look at some real clear goals for, for that. And, and not to say that some phenomenal things have been accomplished. Um, and there may be some goals that just aren't as visible um, on the wall that we're doing with the city um, because if there hadn't been goals the accomplishments would have been wouldn't have been made so uh, again it's been a privilege to work with you guys uh, work with this district uh, my hope is that uh, i can represent zone five on the budget committee that you can it's been um, been a joy for me to do that i I like numbers, so it's, it's not a drudgery for me. But again, it's, uh, it's an incredible district. Um, the, from where I sit, the future's really bright, and, um, and our kids are just going to be blessed to be uh, <coughs> in this district. So, thanks again. Thank you, Steve. Those are ex excellent comments. And, and I, too, want to thank you for stepping in and Kathy stepped out. It's been great to have you. You've been a really good asset on the board. And your perspective from your city role has been really helpful. So we know where to find you. <laughs> Anything else before we break for executive session? We have more work to do. We'll have plenty of time to roast Barbara later. Yes, don't forget. Thank you everybody as we finish up. Can't say thank you enough to everybody. Okay. Thank you everyone. We are adjourned to executive session.